This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Hey friends, today we're going to return to the ancient site of Pergamum. I've told you that for years people have been saying, Brother Rick, would you please take a tour of these ancient sites and we'll go with you? Well, I don't have the time to do that, so we decided we would bring the tour to you. And that's why I want you to have the whole series, which is 10 parts, and it's called Take a Tour with Rick. Pergamum. Yesterday, I took you to the palestra. I took you to the bathhouses, to the temple of Hera. I showed you the civic hall. And today we're going to go onward and I'm going to show you the massive temple of Demeter that had a viewing stand for eight hundred worshipers. Then I'm going to take you to the ruins of the temple of Asclepius. And then I'm going to walk you through a diverse group of buildings that will simply stun you. When you see the, the mosaics, you will be amazed. These are the ruins of Pergamum, where a church was established in the second half of the first century against all odds. It was the darkest city in Asia. In fact, believers referred to the city of Pergamum as the seat of Satan. That's a bad title. There was so much darkness in Pergamum that people saw it as the place from which Satan ruled the whole of Asia. But in spite of the odds that were against them, they went there. They began to shine the light of the gospel. God moved in signs and wonders, and the church really was established there. And if God could do it there, God can do it where you are too. My friends, there's nothing you're facing that you cannot overcome. And that's why I want you to take a tour with Rick of Pergamum. And I also want you to order my book, which is called No Room for Compromise. Aren't we living in a day of compromise? When we're told to alter what we believe, to modify our faith, to bend to the spirit of the age. But Jesus said to the church of Pergamum, that's what this book is about, you are not to compromise. And likewise, Jesus is still saying to us today, there's no room for compromise. And those who choose to walk in faith and to not compromise are the ones who are going to experience the power of of the Holy Spirit in this last age. And if you want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, then you have to dig in your heels and say, I'm not going to make room for compromise in my life. And this book will really encourage you. And look at it. It's full color, page after page after page of full color illustrations, art. Wow, it is just amazing. It's like an encyclopedia of life in the first century for Christians showing you that if they can do it, then surely you can do it too. And I want you to order this by going online or by giving us a call. But hey, also let us know how to pray for you because we're praying people. And God answers when we pray. And God will answer us and God will move mightily in your life to do whatever it is that you're really wanting the Lord to do. But if we know how to pray for you, we will really put our faith together with you. But today, I'm going to take you to the Temple of Demeter. I'm going to show you the Temple of Asclepius and a diverse group of buildings. It is going to amaze you. So let's get started. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. This is Rick Renner, and today we're continuing our tour of the ancient site of Pergamum, and I'm trying to take you places that you will never see even if you come here as a tourist. The sites that I'm showing to you are off limits and you can only access them if you have the approval of the director of the local museum and we have that approval, so here we are. But you may ask, Rick, where are you right now? Well, this is the open air court of the Temple of Demeter. Now you may ask, did they really believe in all this mythology and all of these gods? And the answer is yes. Some people say, well, I think the old world just had an overactive imagination, but not really. These were very brilliant people. For example, look at the pyramids. They built the pyramids and even today, we do not have technology to build the pyramids. These were not silly people. When you study the Greeks and the Romans, their math, 
their science, their philosophy, their history was amazing. These were not people given to an overactive imagination. Well, then what was the source of mythology that they believed in? And the answer is Genesis chapter six. This is the source of all mythology. Chaldean mythology, Babylonian mythology, Persian mythology, Sumerian mythology, all of mythology, Greek and Roman, finds its beginning in Genesis chapter 6, where the Bible tells us that a rebellious group of angels cohabitated with women, had sex with them, and the women gave birth to giants. Listen to what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, verse 2. The sons of God saw that by the way, the sons of God refers to these rebellious angels. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all that they chose. And the Bible says, as a result, in verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Those are the gods of mythology. And when the women gave birth to their children, they were called demigods. They were half angel, half something supernatural, half human being, and they were venerated as being divine. And this really is the source of all mythology in the world today. And you have to understand the Greeks and the Romans were much closer to that history than we are. And they were very involved in the occult and all kinds of pagan worship. So of course they had a connection with the dark realm and they had an understanding of those fallen angels and the creatures that they produced. And that really is the basis of Greek and Roman mythology and all mythology. And even the early church fathers wrote that this really is the connection to mythology. The behind me is the temple of Demeter. It is immense. Now from where I'm sitting, I can look at the valley below and I can see for miles and miles, all the mountain tops in the distance, all the way to the Aegean Sea. But if I turn and look this way, it's quite a mixture. I see the Andesite stones from the Hellenistic period and right on top of it, the white marble from the Roman Imperial period. Wow, just built there together. And if you look further, you see altar after altar, including the main altar, which is simply massive. And there is a viewing stand where 800 spectators could sit to watch the dark, mysterious rites that were carried on inside this temple, which happens to be the oldest pagan temple ever built in Pergamum. This was the first. It was constructed by King Philotel who was the first king of Pergamum. Demeter was the goddess of fertility and crops, and it was believed that at the end of winter, the return of successful crops depended on Demeter's blessing. Because agriculture was vital to the survival of each city, Demeter worship was propagated throughout Greek-dominated lands. This temple of Demeter was built of andesite and was approximately 321 feet by 131 feet. It was immense. It had 80 columns lining three of its sides and was one of the largest religious complexes in ancient Pergamum. Worshippers entered an open air courtyard where sacrifices were regularly offered to Demeter in a sacrificial pit. The goddess allegedly demanded worshipers offer piglets as a sacrifice to ensure that springtime would come and crops would be fruitful. And after the sacrifice, worshipers walked five steps up to the temple's grand entrance. The entrance was flanked with tall Doric columns crowned with elaborately carved palm leaves intended to represent Demeter's blessings on nature and agriculture. The temple had many, many altars, but the one used for the sacrifice of bulls was especially massive in size. And in addition, 10 rows of seats provided accommodation for up to 800 worshipers at one time. These are the remnants of the temple of Asclepius. Asclepius was the Greek god of healing and was renowned 
all over the Greek-speaking world as the one that you were to seek if you needed to be healed. And it was very important that they constructed it on this site because it's right above the palestra. I'm looking right at the palestra as I'm speaking to you. And the palestra were the combat sports where a lot of athletes became really hurt. And if they were wounded, they were brought here to seek the touch of the goddess Clepios to heal them. The worship of Asclepius was widespread throughout the entire empire, but Pergamum took the worship of Asclepius to the highest level. During the fourth century BC, they even constructed a massive Asclepion, a center for healing that became renowned throughout the ancient world. People traveled to Pergamum from across the empire to seek Asclepius' healing touch at that compound. But in addition to the vast Asclepian complex outside Pergamum, this one stood here, dedicated to the god Asclepios. And scholars believe this temple was located near the palestra, so athletes who were injured as a result of physical training could be ushered to the temple to seek the help of pagan priests who would seek the help of the god Asclepios to heal them. Rites associated with this religion included the slaughter of bulls and the offering of bull's blood and the blood of a piglet. But those who were brought to this temple to seek the God's healing touch really didn't understand. They were entertaining demonic powers. That was the problem in the first century world. Temples where they worshiped gods that were filled with demonic activity. These were cesspools of darkness. But people came here thinking that they were going to get help and they would often leave oppressed and influenced by demonic powers. When the first gospel preachers came to the city of Pergamum, they would have seen massive homes and villas scattered all up and down the sides of the slopes that led up toward the top of the Acropolis. And today when you visit this site, which you can't do because this particular part of the site is off limits, but if you could, you would see the ruins of these houses scattered everywhere. But this house is truly remarkable because it is a house that they excavated from the first century. And it's a typical Greek Roman para style house. You say, what does that mean? Well, the word peri means around. The style of this house was it was built around an open courtyard. In the very middle was a pond, a little pool. That's what this is. And it had a roof which was supported by four columns. It was actually a two-story structure, so you could walk on the first floor or on the second floor and look down to the little pool in the middle. And they used this water for bathing and for cleansing and just for enjoying themselves. It was a place where they would just walk and enjoy themselves. But there were many, many rooms. And what's really interesting is when they first began to excavate this house, it was at the same time they began to excavate the Temple of Demeter, which is just a few steps from here. And then they stopped excavations. And many, many years later, they came back to say, hey, let's see what else is there. And wow, what they found is amazing. Room after room with some of the most marvelous mosaics that are still intact. Eventually, archeologists with the help of excavators found this amazing room. And there's so many important things about this room. By the way, this mosaic is probably the oldest mosaic in this house. And if you look at it, the details are very, very important. In the very middle, there's a tiger, there's a leopard, there's two roosters. This was very important because the tiger and the leopard were borrowed from the stadium where there were animal fights, but all around the exterior are the masks which actors wore when they were in the theater. Did you know that the word hypocrite and the word actor is the very same word in the Greek language? That's right. Actors, when they came on the stage, wore masks. They would wear any mask needed to be worn to get the applause of the crowd. And that's what a hypocrite is. He'll say anything, he'll do anything for the approval of people. It's the very word Jesus used when he spoke to the Sadducees and Pharisees and said, you hypocrites. It was the equivalent of saying, I know who you guys are. You're nothing but a bunch of religious phony actors doing whatever you have to do to get the applause of the crowds. But actors were considered to be such low level people because they would say anything 
and do anything for the applause of the crowd that when they died, they weren't even permitted to be buried in a common cemetery. This space to my side is where the cult statue originally stood in this house. And because this room is associated with the theater and with the stadium, it's likely that this was a statue of the god Dionysus, who in the Latin language was known as Bacchus. And when you see an image of Dionysus, his hair is entwined with grape leaves of lots of grapes. That's because he was the god of wine. He was the god of revelry. He was the god of drunkenness. He was the god of orgies. He was even associated with bestiality and the theater. So it's likely that this was a statue of Dionysus, whom the Romans later called Bacchus. I want you to notice this wall. It's visibly different from this floor. That's because they're from different periods. This was a renovation from the second century. And when the archeologists and excavators found it, it was in pieces and they had to put it together like a jigsaw puzzle to put it back on this wall. But this was quite a find. And what is totally amazing is this is just one example of a room from all of these houses that were scattered up and down the slopes of Pergamum. These were wealthy, wealthy people who were entrenched in government and understood what power and luxury was all about. You know, as the excavators kept working on this site, finally, they hit the jackpot. Look at what they found. It makes me think about our lives. Many times we begin a project and we do okay, but we stop and we stop short of the real treasure that God wants to give us. We need to keep digging and digging and digging until we find what it is that God wants us to have in our lives. That's what I think about when I look at this amazing room that is filled with mosaics from the Roman period. This was like wall to wall carpet, but it's Roman mosaics and it's room after room after room. Look at these columns. And what's really amazing is this was not unusual for the houses on the slope here. That's why I'm telling you, the citizens in the upper part of Pergamum were very wealthy people. They were politicians. They were entrenched in government. They had access to a lot of tax money and they used it to embellish their homes. And many, many of the homes, though today they are in ruins, eventually looked like this. Not just this room or that room, but how about that room? It's room after room. And in fact, this was such a treasure. When the archeologists found it, they decided to build a roof over it and to preserve it because it is such a rare find. As the visitor continued upward on the paved road to the top of the city, he passed wine shops that were conveniently located near a small Dionysiac hall to provide wine for worshipers of Dionysius, the Greek god of wine and revelry and orgies. There was another small Odeon scores and scores of luxurious homes. But as prosperous as this middle district was, its wealth was far exceeded a few minutes up the road in the upper district. The peak of the mountain was where the top echelon of the city's wealthiest class lived. And according to earliest sources, the upper district was also the oldest section of Pergamum and had some of the most extravagant and hideous expressions of idolatry and pagan worship in the entire Roman Empire. Pergamum was possibly the darkest pagan city in the first century when gospel preachers first arrived there. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, they penetrated that spiritual darkness and the church was born in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the series, Take a Tour with Rick, Pergamum, Rick Renner walks you through the entire site of Pergamum with permission from local authorities. Every door was open to Rick and his film crew to give you the most in-depth and all-inclusive tour of this once formidable city. This is truly a one-of-a-kind tour of 
Pergamum, and you'll join Rick as he walks you step by step through each site and teaches you all along the way. Rick says, if the Christians in Pergamum could stay true to their faith in the darkness they lived in, then we can do it too. This 10-part documentary style series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20. We're also offering the book, No Room for Compromise, a full-color, beautifully illustrated, hardbound book that will captivate you and your family for years to come. On every page, Rick reveals the realities that early believers faced as the church began to flourish in a dark pagan world. With unsurpassed detail, fascinating insights, and historical context, you'll have a greater appreciation and understanding of Scripture and how you should interpret it for today. No Room for Compromise is available for just $80. Don't miss this special offer. The illuminating series, Take a Tour with Rick, Pergamum, and the book, No Room for Compromise. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I'm standing in the big studio in our new building in Moscow. You helped us build this building. Behind me is the big fireplace. It's covered. That's really the focus of the new studio. There's going to be library shelves and so many wonderful things. And I'm going to be sitting right here teaching the Bible verse by verse, diving into the Greek New Testament to bring teaching that people can trust to the ends of the world. And when I tell you the ends of the world, I really mean that. People are reaching out to us from the farthest ends of the world saying thank you for bringing this teaching right to where we are. And my friends, you're a big part of this because you're a partner. You helped build this building and I want to say thank you to you. I've told you before, it's not about buildings. You just have to have the space so you can create programming. And in just a few weeks, my team is going to move into the second floor of this building while they continue to finish the first floor of the building. It's pretty exciting. But thank you so much for helping us. We really do what we say we're going to do. So here it is. And at the same time, we've been retiring the debt on the big Tulsa facility. That facility is so wonderful. And from that office in Tulsa, we are ministering to the needs of our partners. Partner ministry is not secondary to us. It is first place. We really mean it when we call people partners. And in that Tulsa facility, we're taking calls, making calls, touching lives, and strengthening people who need to be strengthened. That's God's mandate to us to strengthen those that are weak and those who need to be stronger. And we're reaching out by faith and through various means to touch people. And what a pleasure it is. It's really an honor to have partners. And that means you. Thank you for being a partner. And right now, we're paying off that Tulsa facility and a lot of it has already been paid off. That's miraculous. But it's been possible because of the grace of God the favor of God, and because of your faithful and generous giving. And I want to say thank you on behalf of me and Denise and our sons, our family, and our ministry team for the way that you've joined hands with us to help retire the debt on that building. My friends, when that building is paid off, it will suddenly release a flood of finances so we can take the teaching of the Bible even further to the ends of the earth. And that's God's call to us. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And that's our task, to feed many the word of God. And today I wanna to thank you for what you've done to help us build this facility and to pay off the Tulsa building. And together we can get this done. I want to say what a privilege it is that you've allowed me to walk you through the ancient site of Pergamum. When most tourists visit that ancient site, they only see select places. But in this particular series, I'm taking you everywhere, even to places that tourists are forbidden to go. I want to really show you Pergamum. And that's why I call my series, Take a Tour with Rick. Pergamum. Let me take you there so you can see that ancient site in the eyes of the first gospel preachers who were dispatched there. 
They must have been very courageous because when they went to the city of Pergamum, they were going to a city which was called the seat of Satan. In fact, when we come back tomorrow, I'm going to take you to the great altar of Zeus, which was called the seat of Satan. It is amazing what you're going to learn in tomorrow's program. But if you get the series, you can see everything that was in the ancient side of Pergamum and you'll really understand. And this is what I want you to get that if the believers in the first century could face all that darkness and establish the church in it and thrive in the midst of that difficult environment, so can you. You can do it. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If they could do it, you can do it too. But please order this by going online or by giving us a call. And we're also offering you right now my book, which is called No Room for Compromise. Wow. The director of the Pergamum Museum said, this is one of the best and most comprehensive books ever produced on this subject. That's the director of a museum. But my friends, when you open it, you're going to find so much more than history and archaeology. This book is filled with teaching about how to overcome difficult situations. The Pergamum church was told not to compromise in Revelation chapter 2. And some did, and some didn't. Those who compromised really suffered severe consequences. Those who said, hey, we're not going to bend to the spirit of the age, we're not going to compromise, experienced the glorious power of God in their life. And if you'll dig in your heels and say, I'm not bending, I'm not mitigating my faith, I'm going to stick with the scriptures, you will walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. It belongs to those who will make no room for compromise. And that's why I want you to have this book. It was Christ's message to the church of Pergamum and it's Christ's message to the church today as well. But hey, we also want to pray for you. So call us or send us an email. The moment the phone rings or the moment that your email shows up in our inbox, Denise and I and our team, we're going to begin to pray for you. And when we say we pray for you, we really mean we pray for you. Our partner care ministry is a place where miracles occur every day. And if you need a miracle to take place in your life, give us a call or send us an email. And according to Jeremiah 33, 3, we'll call out to God in faith. He'll hear us. He'll answer us. And he'll do something mighty in your life. But let us know how to pray by calling us or by sending us an email and we'll join you in faith and God will do something significant for you. And I promise you that whatever you share with us will be kept in confidence. But Father, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit and that the greater one really does live in us. Help us to release the power of God as we choose to make no room for compromise in our lives. In Jesus' powerful, precious name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow, but remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.